the first song we did um, was talking about um, a war. And it got me to thinking of conversation yesterday with a dear friend. A lot of times, the greatest war we have is in our minds. It's, it's the enemy does a whole number on us when it comes to our minds and our thinking. And I love that song, The Lion of Judah, because, you know, when we recognize the valleys and we recognize the mountains and we call those valleys up and we call those mountains down to where, yep, it's an, it's an, easier, it's an easier climb. And sometimes God doesn't give us an easier climb. And in Romans 8 and Romans 12... It has a couple scriptures that really talk about the mind. So in Romans 8, 5, it says, Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things, but those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about the things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. And we definitely want life and peace. But it also says in Romans 12, in Romans 12, 2, it says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Not every thought we have that we battle in our mind is sinful, but how we handle that thought turns into sin. Sometimes when we think of sinful, we think of, you know, all those terrible things that we could be doing. But worry is a sinful thought. Um, you know, just, you know, anger, you know, when we're thinking about someone. So all of those, you know, it's, it's making sure we distinguish that we're not just talking about the worst thoughts you could ever have. We're talking about just going through our daily and dealing with a coworker or a child or a spouse. And so getting our mind to where we can get up out of those valleys and we can reach those mountaintops, um, that's what God has for us. And that's what I was encouraging a friend who's getting ready to be a complete empty nester. And it's just, it's messing with her mind. She said, she goes, my whole identity has been a mother. I said, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. And she knows that, but at the same time, the enemy is just battling her. And sometimes we just have to walk through that. Those are tough roads when we have new seasons that are coming into place. And we're going to have to completely shift what we're doing. And you know what? Shifting is all good. Shifting is good. It means something new and something different. And it means change. And as much as some people don't like change, change is one of the most beautiful things that God uses to just um, give us something new that we never even knew we could do or expect. So I just encourage you this morning to reach for those mountaintops, call those mountains down lower, get up out of those valleys. Amen. And let's press on to what God has for us. No matter what you are processing through right now, the battle starts right in your mind. The enemy is going to mess with that as much as he can. So get it under control. Get it under the word. Remember Romans 8, Romans 12. Don't let the enemy control your mind. You let God be the peace that um, just surpasses all understanding no matter what your circumstance is. Amen. All right, thank you for joining us this morning. What a beautiful worship, right? That was, that was beautiful. And we just want to welcome anyone who might be new this morning, brand new to Empowered Life Church. Maybe you're just visiting from out of town. And we just want to welcome you. If you are, Miss Nancy has these wonderful bags that we give out. If you didn't give one, get one as you came in. Is there anyone who is brave enough this morning to say, I am brand new this morning. This is my first time. Would you be willing to raise your hand? There we go. I love it. And they look fabulous too. So, <laughs> so thank you for being here at Empowered Life Church. We also want to thank those of you who are watching and going to be watching online. Welcome. And we're so glad you can join us for our full service here at Empowered Life Church that will be posted later this afternoon. We've had to kind of move away from live stream for now only because, um, you know, online has just given us a little bit of trouble. So we're still recording, posting it later just for any of you who, um, who have enjoyed watching the live stream after 
at 1030. And so we're kind of moving away from that just temporarily until God kind of moves a few things, then we'll be back. So we wanted to move into our tithe and offering this morning. If you have a tithe or an offering that you would like to bless this house with, we want to give you an opportunity to do so. We have baskets in the back. If you have envelopes, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. They will be happy to hand you out one right now. We also have online giving. You can put your phone right up to that. Um, all you techies with phones, you can give that way. You can give online at our on our app. So all kinds of ways. I do old school check. So it's just what I like. Uh, I'm a paper person. I'm a book paper person. <laughs> Anyone a Kindle person? I'm not a Kindle. I just cannot. I need to draw in line. And so same with um, my checks. So it's just how we roll. We're all different, and we love that. So we have all kinds of ways. Um, we want to share that we have a few new things that are going to be happening. One is our children's ministry. Pastor shared about that last week. We are going to be launching our children's ministry. We are going to be having a training. And we need people that will step up, learn how to do it. The more people we have, then, you know, you might only need to serve once every six weeks. You may be called to children's ministry, and you're going to want to serve more than that. But we need more people so that we can launch our children's ministry and do it with excellence. Miss Flo... She is. She's in the back there, so she's waving. Take a look at her. She oversees all of our children's ministry. She has a laptop back there. So if you want to learn this new program, it's, it's, it's a new children's ministry that we're going to be doing. It's going to take some training. If you want to learn it, even if right now you're saying, I will serve for a, a season, Right now, we need that so then we can begin to grow it. She has a laptop out there because we do background checks on anyone who serves in our children's ministry. We are just being thorough and making sure that we are protecting our children. So if you would be willing to serve even just once a month, you can go back to Flo and she can actually do that background check today and we'll have an answer tomorrow. That's going to help us as we move forward and we look at picking a date for doing um, our launch of our training. So that's going to be helpful. Those of you who have been at ELC a long time and you're like, I'm not called to children's ministry, but maybe you'll be called for the next four months to children's ministry. Open up your heart to get this ministry launched and then all of us be on a search to really finding people like Flo that just love children and they want to serve them all the time and that's what they're called to do. So right now we might be called to a season. So Miss Flo would like to see you. Please don't let her leave empty-handed today. That's all I ask. <laughs> Encourage her for just the effort she's putting forth. And then next week is Mother's Day. What a beautiful day. I just love Mother's Day these days. I have three daughters. Next week, we are going to celebrate Mother's Day here at Empowered Life Church. So at 930, remember Easter, you got to come early and we fed you, moms. We're going to do the same, except this time we're doing muffins and mocktails. So kind of having just a little bit of fun, muffins and mocktails. So that is going to be opened up at 930 in the morning. Come and enjoy some fellowship. Let us love on you as a mom. We have a very special service that you're not going to want to miss. And so we're not going to give away all those fun details. But we want to just love on you as a mom. And all of us moms, we need a little bit of extra love. Sometimes it goes beyond what our kids can give us. It's scratching and clawing and whining, you know. And when you're out of that stage, you need something completely different. So, <laughs> so come next week, and <laughs> I will not repeat that. <laughs> come next week, enjoy our Mother's Day service. We are going to move into love time now. So this is a 10-minute sp space, a 10-minute space that Empowered Life Church offers you. This is an opportunity to connect with, um, with those who you know, those who you don't know. If you see someone that you just need to pray for or if you need prayer, you know, you can reach out to a friend or anyone in here and just use that opportunity for the next 10 minutes. At nine minutes, at nine minutes, these lights are going to go out. That means it's a one-minute warning. That means we want you to start to move toward your seat. That means when pastor gets on stage, he is going to pray over the service. 
absolute silence comes in because we want to just honor and respect the Lord before he gives the word. Amen. So everyone, if you know, it gets to that 10 minute mark and someone's talking, if you get a loving hand on your shoulder, it's a loving hand. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And so, because last week we were a little noisy and listen, I was part of that too. I'm going to miss sometimes. I'm a chatterbox. So All right, so we are going to send you off 10 minutes, 9 minutes. Lights go down, head back to your seat, and we will see you back here for a great word from Pastor Jerry. So well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. We thank you for the God that we can grow more in your purpose and plan and that we can continually walk in the presence and in the purpose that you created us to be, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we are focused, we are committed, we are living life to its fullest, Father, because you are in us. We thank you. We praise your name. Amen. Well, welcome uh, back, uh, also our online family. And I want to, I'm starting a new series this week. This this week, it'll go for a few weeks. But I wanted to kind of give you guys an idea because we are transitioning. We will never change our identity, but, but, but we can always enhance our purpose. And so my wife showed me a video this week, and it just, it reminded me of, of why I became a Christian. It reminded me of, of, of who I want to be, and I want to take you guys along on this ride. And it won't be fun all the time, but it'll be life-changing. And so I have a quick video. It's four minutes long, and then I'll start. So sh- hit the lights, please, and we'll rock this. Thank you. 
So if you ever think you're having a bad day as a Christian, if you ever think you're being persecuted, if you ever think that you have it rough over here as a Christian, just shut up. There's no need because when you see that, and I've known that for years, and understand that Christianity is illegal in China. It's illegal. You'll be put in jail or you'll be executed. It's illegal in Afghanistan. It's illegal in Iran. And Christianity is flourishing in those countries. But when you have the freedoms that we have over here in America, we tend to take things like coming to church for granted or watching online for granted. Oh, I'll do it when I get time. And you have people over there who are in prison and are memorizing scripture. And so we have to reprioritize our desires, our passions as Christians. And so I want us, to, I'm going to show that at least once a month. So we can begin to think about why are we here? Are you falling in love with Jesus every day? Is he your priority? Are you making excuses for not being passionate. Are you willing to go to prison for your faith? If they said you can't come to church anymore, if they, if they said you had to, to stop, you can't have any Bibles in your home, would you begin to memorize scripture? Would you join me in prison? And so that's where we're, we've got to understand that. Hallelujah. So with that in mind, I'm, gonna, I'm starting a new series called The Blessed Life. And you go, wow, how can you go from that to that? Because we are blessed not because we live in America, but because we are children of God. And we're children of God when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Everyone is a creation of God. Everyone. And But the line comes when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then you become a child of God. Then you are in line for certain favors that other creatures of God and creations of God aren't. I'll give you an example. I love my kids. I got a daughter and a son. And I'm not flexing. I'm just giving honor to God. But the things that we've had to do for them over the past 19 years and in 17 years, almost 18 years here, in a, in a, here next month, oh my gosh, I wouldn't do for any other child <laughs> because they're my children. They were given to me and my wife. And so when you make the decision to become, I'm kind of echoey, Tim, just a touch. So w when you make the decision to become a Christian, when you make a decision to give your life up, to give your life up, People ask me, I don't know why I'm saying they People go, well, pastor, why are you a Christian? Because I was called to be a Christian. I mean, I'm sorry, a pastor. This wasn't my choice. It was a calling. I had a career as an airline pilot. That was great. It was awesome. But I was called to be a pastor. And so I gave up everything for the Lord. As a Christian, you give up your life for the Lord. And there's no better thing in the world, y'all. No better. So, we are entitled to what we call a blessed life. We're blessed because we are made in the image of God, just like all creatures are. But when it comes to these three areas that I'm going to talk about over the next few weeks, we have three areas. They're called the tithe, T-I-T-H-E, your 10% that you give to God, your time, which is what you give back to God, and then your talents. It's the purposes and plans that God has given you to promote his kingdom and to, and to establish his covenant. But at the end of the day, your tithe, your time, and your talent, it's all about the heart. It's all about your heart. And so let's start from here. So God's kingdom operates off of one main principle, and it's called sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. Now, the world may call that karma, but we don't use those kind of terms it's called sowing and reaping. Now, let's look at the, um, you know what, and I didn't put it down, but I just got it last night. So m just write this down. And if, uh, Siobhan, if you can have that in your computer, I don't know, but Genesis 8.20, and I'll read it real quick. You, you may not be happy, but just go ahead and write it down. It says, then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took 
of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Okay, you all understand that? That from youth we are evil. No one is born good. We're all born sinners. But you get the choice to become a Christian when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay, but until that, you are a sinner and you are headed for hell. We understand that, right? Okay, good deal. All right, so the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, nor will I again destroy everything as I have done. Verse 22, while the earth remains, is the earth still happening right now? Okay, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. All right? So, seed time and harvest are sowing and reaping. So now let's use some transitional words now. Let's replace the word sowing for giving. Sowing for giving. So, the Bible says that for God so what? Love the world that he what? He gave. God is a generous and giving God. And we are all, again, made in his image. We're all creatures of God. And we are all wanting to become better givers and be more generous. So now watch this. For the next few weeks, we'll focus on our giving. Now, not just giving our financial needs, but also giving in other areas, which may be as or more painful than giving money. How easy is it to forgive people? Because when you give forgiveness, you'll get it back. Oh, I guess y'all didn't hear that. All right, so I'll say that again. I'm just kind of wake you up, okay? When you give forgiveness, you will get that back. If you never give forgiveness, you will never receive forgiveness. Oh, by the way, forgiveness is the crux and the foundation of the Christian faith. So if you can't have a, a, a pliable heart towards forgiving, then you may want to wonder about your faith. Hallelujah. So now here we go. Matthew 7 1. We're going to read a verse that has been many, many times misused as a money-grabbing verse by a lot of churches. But there's a point in it, and, and then I want you to understand where, it's, where I'm going. So, verse 1 says, Judge not that you be not judged, for with, that, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged with the same measure you use. It will be measured back to you. Say it again. Judge not that you will not be judged. For with the same judgment you judge, you'll be judged, and with the same measure you use, it'll be measured back to you. So, am I talking about money? Am I talking about forgiveness? No. Am I talking about love? No. I'm talking about judging. Don't judge. Why? Because how you judge other people, you'll be judged also. Okay? The context is not money. But watch this. Let's go to Luke 6, 37. It's on the screen there. It says, judge not, and you should not be judged. Condemn not, and you should not be condemned. Forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Give, and it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For in the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So if you judge people, well, what will happen to you? You'll be what? Come on, talk to me. Judged. If you forgive people, what will be, what do you get back? Forgiveness. If you love people, what do you get back? And not only the same measure, but you'll get even more brought back to you. So that's why Christians always walk in a high level of Immediate and ready forgiveness. It's not an option for us to not walk in forgiveness. Tolerance is not forgiveness. Ooh, ouchie. Tolerance is not forgiveness. Now, the world says that, well, you got to tolerate my sin. No, I don't. I tolerate you as a person and as a creation of Christ. I don't tolerate your fruits. See, I don't like bananas, and I don't tolerate them. 
I don't like avocados. Is that a fruit? Yeah. And I don't, so I don't tolerate them. But baby cakes, I can tolerate me some peaches. <laughs> hint, hint, hint. I can tolerate me some watermelon. Hallelujah. All right? I can tolerate them all, all day long. Some grapes, some blueberries, some blackberries. I can tolerate them all day long. Okay? So keep that in mind. If you give love, you'll get love back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, I know that there's a lot of stuff on TikTok right now, and, and so and for, for you people over 45, TikTok is an app that <laughs> literally three-fourths of the world ages between 14 and, what, 25 are on. And they have these challenges. So when you all go home, you, you people under 25, I want you to get a bottle of Coke, go outside of your parents' house, and shake it up. That was a song back in the 80s, wasn't it? Yeah, by the cars. Ooh, I'm going back in time. Oh, my gosh. Okay. You shake it up, and you see what happens. That's the same response you'll get when you give anything to anybody else. If you give hate, if you give unforgiveness, if you give cursing and condemning, you'll get that amount back. Press down, shaking together, and blowing up all over the place. But when you give love, when you give forgiveness, when you sow into the kingdom, you'll get it pressed down, shaken together, and it'll explode all over you. That's how the kingdom principle works. So the word money does not appear in those verses, but sowing and giving are a matter of the heart. So you go, well, gee, is God after my money? Yeah, he is. Not the church, but God. Why? Because, see, your money is attached to your wallet or your purse. There's a string that goes from your heart to your giving. I'll give you an example. Your kids need something at school? Well, you know, okay, my son's graduating. You know, he's going to the prom, you know, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, and so a shirt costs how much? The prom tickets cost how much? Ooh, let me pray on that for a second. <laughs> he may be home with me. <laughs> you know, but by the same token, too, because your children are your treasure, your grandchildren, Robert, Robert Janey, are your treasures. It's not an option. Oh, my, my grandbaby needs something? Oh, come on, come, come to Paul Paul. Come to Gigi. Oh, whatever you need. I'm sure if Levi needs something, oh, my gosh, just name the price. So where your treasure is, there your heart is also, too. You've never seen a grandparent's love for their grandchild and not there be some kind of affection or money next to it. It doesn't happen because that's their love. That's your treasure. So now watch this. So if God can get your wallet, he can get your heart. So watch this now. When things affect our wallet, they suddenly have our full attention. Woo! When things affect your wallet, it's like, oh, oh, okay, hold up. Perfect example. I'm 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 on I'm on the computer this week. My wife asked me to to uh, to to do something for her on the computer, and she brought the mail. Or my son brought the mail in, and it said toll road. And I'm like, wait a minute! I just paid that toll when we went to California in March. So why are they sending me another uh, deal? And so I opened it. She opened it, and she goes, "Here, we, we got penalized for not paying our toll on time." And I left the computer. Got on the phone because it was like a hundred something. I'm like, no, oh, grande he kesa taiki. I said, hey, you know, and so I had to prove to them that I had paid the toll. That got my full attention because you know California don't play them toll rolls, so they don't play at all. They don't play at all. They'll come and get you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when things affect your wallet, they suddenly have our attention. Jesus says, where your treasure is. Your heart is also. So Matthew 6, 21 says this, for where your treasure is, there your heart will, is also. And your heart, your heart follows your treasure. Your heart follows it. So wherever your grandkids go, oh, my gosh, well, <laughs> what do you need, baby? What do you need? Your kids are going to college, going to prom, going to high, well, what do you need? It will follow it. You want a real nice car, nice shoes, nice dress? Visa is, is your friend at that time. 
So now watch this. For we treasure our hearts. Okay, now if you want your heart, or if you want your if you want your heart in the kingdom, then put your treasure also in the kingdom. Watch this. Many Christians are simply satisfied with just having their body in the kingdom, and they put their treasure in the world. Let me say it again, because that's good. Many Christians are simply satisfied with just having their body in the kingdom. What does that mean? You go to church. You go to something every now and then outside of church. And then you hope to go to heaven. Well, actually, your body doesn't go there. Your soul does. So watch this. In the kingdom, and they, are, and, and they put their treasure in the world, but they have it backwards. This is what Jesus says. So church, we have it backwards. This is what the Bible says. Matthew 6, 19. Do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where, there, where neither moth nor dust or rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers will be also. The Message Bible says this, stockpile treasures in heaven where it's safe from moth and rust and burglars. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place where you most want to be and end up being. Did y'all catch that? If you have more treasures in the world, in carnal life, than you do in heaven, you may not end up in heaven. Understand that. The Passion Bible says this, for your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. Oh, sila. So let's process that for a second, church. It is not wrong to have a great house. Everyone say amen. Everyone say, that's me. Okay? It is not, home, it, it is not wrong to have two or three nice cars. Everyone say amen. Okay? If you have nice shoes, nice clothes, that is not a sin. If you, have, if you have land, if you have property, if you have ranches, if you have buildings, it's not a sin. It's not a sin. If, 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 if that were a sin, then very, very few of the disciples would be in heaven because they all were, were, were wealthy before they become, became disciples. There's a dude named Solomon who was extremely, he was the richest man ever lived. Richer than uh, Bezos, richer than Musk, <laughs> I thought that kitty. <laughs> he 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 was balling. But the issue is this: when you put your possessions before the purpose of God in your life, that's the issue, church. When you make the decision to not give to the house of God, when it's God that blesses you, that's the issue. And then this is what I hear often: Well, Pastor, I don't give. Well, no, I have friends of mine who aren't saved. Who has friends who aren't saved? Who has family who's not saved? All right. Who has family and friends who aren't saved but, but look wealthy and, and have really, really nice things? Okay. The Bible says this. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? What does that mean for us? Jesus said the poor will be always with us, and that, but that doesn't have to mean us. All right, and when you make the decision to tithe and give to the house of God, you're putting yourself in a position of favor and a blessed life and a blessed afterlife. And see, I'm focused on afterlife. Uh, understand me. I see. We think ninety. Okay, for instance, the oldest person in the world just died last week, 119 years old. Gosh, 119 years old. And that's a long time on earth. But we're going to spend nine times that amount in, e in eternity, a millennium, a thousand years. And where you, how you live your life now will determine your address. How you give to the house of God is going to determine how you live at your address. 
don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, but store for yourselves things in heaven. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it just completely be horrible to get to heaven and Peter looks through your earthly, what's, it's an accounting word, your earthly ledger and say, okay, all right, good. Okay, you gave your house, you know, you paid your house off. That was $150,000 back in 1920. <laughs> you paid your house off. <laughs> you paid all nine of your cars off. You see, you went to Hawaii five times. Oh, man, you must have. Now, you see, you must have lived in Southern California because you got lots of down there. Okay, you know, you bought clothes. Great. House of God. Over your lifetime of 87 years or 90 years, $5,000. But you made 90000 a year for 30 years. Oh, wow. And so we have to understand that, again, well, okay, Lord, I'll shut up then. I was going to say that I don't think tithing or giving to the house is a heaven or hell issue, but God told me to be quiet. But I do think it, it shows your heart. It shows your heart. Because, see, you can't go to Chick-fil-A and go, you know what? I'm just here once a month. Or I pass by here every now and then, and you have such a great place, and everyone says hi. And so I'd like... Um, he has a drink and, and that, you know, and, but I'm just going to leave and, and pray for me as I leave. Or go to, now, you know, I want a triple, triple with, with no spread. I want a protein style. I want your large fries. And then I want, you know, a Sprite. But I'm going to leave and I'm not going to pay for it. You'll have a big following <laughs> with lights, cameras, and hopefully no action, you know. <laughs> All right, so watch this. So everything having to do with giving is a heart issue. And church, I'm not talking about just giving your money. Y'all forgive me. It's when people wear my mic, it jacks up. And see, I got a unique ear, and uh, they're big. And so, <laughs> so, so whether you do it in forgiveness, how's your forgiveness giving? Are, do you forgive easily? It's, y'all, you know, it's not, it's not macho or cool to not forgive. Y'all know that, right? It's not macho or cool to say, well, I'll forgive, but I won't. Well, whatever you sow, you'll get it back. Press down, shaking together, running over. So then you are bringing people who don't forgive into your life too. Ooh, how fun can that be? Well, you don't know, you don't know, the, you don't know what they did to me, God. God knows. He allowed it to happen. For what reason, I don't know, but grow from it. Think about it for a second, y'all. Are you judgmental? I was that way for years, and I, and I have to work at it now. You know, it means you're just really arrogant and stuck in yourself, and you're narcissistic, and, and you think your way is best. And so when, when you choose to walk in judgment and being condemning, well, let, well, okay, well, then you'll get that right back. You'll get it right back. So... I'm going to reread Luke real quick. Luke 6, 3, give, and it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So here's my question, church. How do we develop a heart of generosity? Oh, wow. Well, here we go. So when we are, when we're born, we're born selfish. Y'all know that, right? You, you, you never got to teach a baby to say mine, you know, mine, mine, mine. Or, I mean, you know, it's mine, it's mine. And just so you know, and I have the, the greatest wife in the world because she, because she's my wife, of course. I'm sure every man thinks about his wife. Right, man? Right, husband? Okay, good deal. But here is a clue to help you continually. Now, some husbands have been delivered from this sin. I haven't. And I'm getting better. But when we go out and eat, my wife does not ask to taste my food because it is my food. <laughs> I will buy her whatever she wants to have. I'll buy her 85 pieces of chicken, I'll buy whatever, but this is my plate. 
mi comida está aquí. I don't share, okay? I don't share with my kids. I don't share with, no, 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 it is mine. Okay? So, wives, it's something that's just ingrained, in, in, you know, just ingrained in us as, as young boys. It is mine. Okay? So, we, we, we love them. I'm working on that area. So, we were born selfish, but we're born again generous. Everyone say, that's me. Okay? We just have to renew our minds, like Shauna said this morning. So, as Christians, we really want to be generous. Why? Because our Heavenly Father is also. So, um, Siobhan, go down to Luke 6.27, because I'm kind of skipping around because I want to share something real quick. Luke 6.27, and I'm reading out of the Amplified Bible. Here is how you develop a generous heart. Because I know and God knows that you want to be generous, but there are certain areas of your life that you haven't worked out as not yours anymore. The Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So everything that you see, everything that you have is not yours, it's God's. Okay? And understand, church, Information without revelation brings desolation. And when you live off of a life of feelings and information, you can't be renewed like Shauna said also this morning. So Luke 6, 27, and y'all, this verse, oh my gosh, kicked me in my teeth. Because, you know, when you read things and you go, wow, could that be the case? Because my wife said something to me a few weeks ago that Pastor Dan said, who's our overseer, and it just hit me really hard because I had to change my heart because I was being judgmental. I was being condemning. Here we go. But I say to you who, who hear me and pay attention to my words. This is Jesus talking. Love, that is unselfishly, seek the best or higher good for your enemies. Not your friends, not your families, but your, come on, say it. So you're seeking the best. From your enemies. You're going to talk and share to your enemies. You are walking in forgiveness with your enemies. People who you know do not like you. Who have hurt you. Who have gone against you. Who have talked about your grandbaby. You know that's a death sentence right there, y'all. So here we go. Do good to those who hate you. Or let me go back. Make it a practice. Make it a practice. Make it a practice. Make it a practice. We practice brushing our teeth. We practice bathing. We practice eating. We practice uh, uh, sleeping. Means that's something you do every single day. Make a practice every day of loving and forgiving your enemies. Bless and show kindness to those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. There's someone in my life, there are actually there are two people in my life, who have cussed me out. Who have comp- just, and knowing what I do for a living, they just cuss me out. And today I can say that I've hugged them since then, and they've apologized. Because now the old Jerry, baby, <laughs> I, 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 I can give a class in unforgiveness and giving the cold shoulder. I could give a class, I, I, I have a PhD in it. Because I was, I, that's all I did. So, here we go. Bless and show kindness to those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever strikes you on the cheek, offer him the other one also. Now, this is metaphorical. All right? Again, you know, in today's society, if someone hits you, you know, you, you, you predicate on where you are. You need to get up and walk away. You know, just if someone doesn't, uh, you know, uh, a Will Smith on you, just walk off, you know, and just, just keep it going. Just just keep it going, okay? So, because think about it, church, think about this for a second. Where would you be able to show the biggest amount of Christ in your life? If someone curses you out in private or in public, and then you walk away and says, hey, you know, I'm praying for you, and, and just walk away. Now, your friends may call you a wuss. Or whatever word, but you know in your heart who fights your battles. You know who fights your battles. And this is what God says. Oh, you messed up with my child? Oh, well, you don't want it with me. 
And so as Christians, we have to learn to get off of our eagle horse. I'm talking to Jerry Camp in a second right now, okay? Ego has no place in the house of God or in the kingdom of God. I love you too, by the way. Whoever strikes you on the cheek, offer him the other one. Also, simply ignore insignificant insults or losses and do not bother to retaliate, just like they do in China. Maintain your what? Dignity. Dignity. So when you walk away, when you say, I'll pray for you, you're maintaining your spiritual dignity. May not feel like it, but you're doing that. And God is watching you. Whoever takes away your coat, don't withhold your shirt from them either. Give to everyone who asks of you. Whoever takes away what is yours, don't demand it back. I was so convicted because my wife went to teach at Pastor Dan's church. And can I be authentic with y'all? Can I open my heart? Okay. I have no problems with people. Well, I have a problem with it, but people coming into my car and asking for money. Because that to me is I got to always know where my space is, okay? And I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're doing. And so Pastor Dan, who's 75 years old this year, my wife told me that he would get out of the car and go, and anybody he, who asked him to give him, to give him money, he gave it to him. And he quoted this verse. And I'm like, as a Christian, I suck. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, it says it right here. Give to, not just some people, to everyone who asks of you, whoever takes away what is yours, don't demand it back. And he walks in a high level of prosperity, a high level of blessing. And so then my wife started, to, well, my wife She's, all, she's, a, she's, she's better than me anyway, but I, I just, you know what, I got to go, well, okay, so go see, here's Jerry Camp in a second. Well, why are you in this position? Well, what did you do wrong? Well, are you on drugs? Well, let's, da, da, and I began to condemn him or judge her for where they were. And that is not my job. And so God says, Jerry, you're, you're judging, you're condemning. And I had to check myself this, this past couple weeks, so... I, I had graduated. I went to get some gas over off of uh, Lake Mead Parkway and Boulder Highway. Homeless haven, okay? <laughs> and I was literally waiting for somebody to come around me, but nobody came around me. I was like, okay, I got $5. No one came to me. I guess I smelled bad. I don't know what happened. But I, I, I was, I was, I, I, I've seen the light. Treat others the same way you want them to treat you. Mm. If you only love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. Big yip if you love your parents who love you, your brother who loves you, your boss. Lo so what? Love somebody that doesn't love you. If you only love those who love you, what credit is to you? Now watch this, verse 33. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that for you? For even sinners the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect to receive it back, catch that, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to receive back the same amount. I got to caveat this because my wife and I had a conversation this week, this past week, you know, someone that we love, you know, needed some money. <sighs> No, okay, yeah. And, you know, I said, well, I will loan it to them. And my wife said, uh, well, you can do what you want to do, but I don't loan money. I, I just sow it. And I'm saying this person has shown no level of maturity, no level of thankfulness, no level of apology. And she goes, well, that's my principle, though. I don't, I don't loan money. Lord, this woman you gave me. <laughs> I came back to her and I was like, but honey, I don't loan money. They walk away again. <laughs> okay, well, I'll give them a little bit. And then they can, they can go to God. So, But 
that's a principle that we've had in our marriage for 22 years. We don't loan money. We will give it to you. If, if God says so, <laughs> let me rephrase. Let me, let me qualify that for a second. If God says so, we've given away cars. We've given away, I mean, we practically gave away our house in Dallas. So, I mean, if God says so. Okay, here we go. But love that is unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies. And do good and lend, expect nothing in return, for your reward will be rich or great, abundant, and you will be sons of the Most High. Because he himself is kind and gracious and good to the ungrateful and the wicked. That's the B-I-B-L-E. He said, hey, listen, you know what? If you give money to your 10-year-old granddaughter because she made an A, yeah, awesome. That's what you're supposed to do. But sometimes you've got to sow where you can't see. You've got to sow into people who are acting a straight-up fool and pray that your money that is blessed because you give to God first will somehow touch them or back in black church touch them and it will change them. And that's only when God says so. Oh. Y'all, I'm being condemned as I preach right now. <laughs> so know that I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself, all right? I'm, I'm just, I'm, he's kicking me in the head right now. So this, so be merciful, be responsive, compassionate, be tenderhearted, just as your heavenly Father is merciful. At the end of the day, church, God is trying to deal with our hearts. Our hearts. Our hearts are the issue. Our hearts are the issue. Why? Because we can be selfish. We can be really, really selfish. So now we get the opportunity this whole week is to check ourselves. See where we are in our hearts. And I get to lead. <laughs> so... And when you find yourself in situations and positions where you're caught off guard and someone asks to give, that is the opportune time when God is saying, oh, yeah, I sent them your way. I sent them your way. Yeah, they have no way of paying you back, but I sent them your way because I know that I've blessed you. So now you can be a blessing. going to skip next week with Mother's Day. My wife's going to teach, but we're going to continue this in two weeks. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that we're walking by faith and not by sight, that we are growing more and more in you in every aspect. Tim, I'm going to change the mics to speaker, Tim. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that your presence is here in this place, and that we welcome you here, Father. If anyone is here and you'll say, you know, I'm not a Christian, but I'm curious because I've never seen Christ presented this way. And not that I'm doing anything special. I just believe that anytime you come to the house of God, he's going to present things differently to attract you. If you'll say, you know what, I'm not a Christian, but I want to know more. I want to know more about this Jesus, about this Savior, about this Father who loves us unconditionally. And you may be in a good point in your life. You may be going through hell right now. But at any rate, he loves you. And he wants to be there for you if you will allow him into your heart. That's the key. It's all about the heart. And so if you're here this morning and you'll say, Pastor, I'm not a Christian. I don't know where I would go if I died. I, I think I know, but I've never really asked Jesus to be my Lord. And you want to know more about him then I want to pray with you and, and kind of give you a book. We have a book for you. 
And I want to kind of just share with you what that means. So if that's you, raise your hand so I can see you. And I want to sh- pray with you real quick and just give you a book. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And now, if you're here and you are a Christian, but you've walked away, you've just walked away, you've not, you're not where you should be or where you were, but you want to return, his arms are always open really, really wide, extremely wide. And he's waiting for his sons and daughters to come back. If that's you, I want to pray with you also. Just raise your hand real high for me. Raise it real high. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Well, let's stand. And as our prayer team comes forward, we're going to give you all an opportunity to pray with someone. So if you raised your hand or if you thought about raising your hand or if you didn't raise your hand because you're kind of embarrassed, it's, it's okay. It's all right. But right now, we're going to open up the altar. In front and back, we have prayer team in the, in the front and also in the back. And we want to pray with you guys just for a few minutes. And so if you have any kind of need in your life, whether it be financial, you're going through a health issue, you're going through some mental struggles, your physical struggles, you, you are interceding for someone. There's someone in your life that's not saved and you want to pray for them, this is a time. So for the next few minutes, the altars are open. And if you want to ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, this is the time too. So you can come here or back there. So let's pray and let's go from this. So come quickly. Come quickly. Thank you. You can turn it up, Tim. Go ahead. We also have a prayer partner in the back, too, if one's going to come back. 